My name is Julian, and here's my story. I quit my job as a corporate lawyer, making over $300,000 a year when I finally learned this about mental health. I've always been the model student. In high school, I was valedictorian. I went on to graduate UC Berkeley in three years, Harvard Law School at 24, and before I knew it, I was making the big bucks in big law at a top Bay Area law firm here in California. Now, at this point in my life, I'm 26 years old. I'm making a lot of money, but I'm not really energized and fulfilled by what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I've grinded my whole life to get to this point, and I'm looking at my day-to-day -day work, and it's not really exciting me. I look back at my past, and I think about how when I was in my early 20s, I had uncontrollable gagging that was induced by anxiety. I didn't drink alcohol because I thought I had stomach problems, again, related to my anxiety. I went to therapy on and off for years. And during the pandemic, things got much darker with the isolation and the quarantine and all of us working around the clock in big law, I became mildly depressed. I had chased this idea of success for so long and I had achieved it in every threshold along the way. I got the grades in high school, I got the grades in college, I got the grades in law school, I got the job, and now at the job, I was one of the stellar associates, always getting back to people quickly, always doing good quality work. I have it all, right? Well, I learned the hard way that having it all on the outside does not ever guarantee that you have it all on the inside. And my fulfillment in life basically hit an all-time low during my years in big law. I would no longer look forward to the future. I was no longer excited to wake up in the morning. Every day that would go by was another day. And before I knew it, I was becoming numb to various emotions, happiness, sadness, guilt, all of it. The money was great. There's no getting around that. And being on the path of a lawyer where you're going to make all this money, not just as a mid-level associate where I was, but beyond in your career, it's hard to turn it down. And it's hard when you're in that position to feel like, I just, I wanna give it all up to chase something new. But at the same time, I knew that something had to give because I was completely miserable. The thing that really made me realize I needed to quit my job was that no one was gonna make a change for me. And if I didn't change the path that I was on, I could see where that future was leading me. If I were truly honest with myself, it was a path of more misery. It was a path of despair. It was a path of more mental health issues. When I thought about the other path ahead of me, managing my mental health, taking it seriously, quitting my job and just falling into whatever happens next. If nothing else, I will understand and focus on my mental health. I had no idea what would happen, but you know what? I knew that that was an alternative path. It wasn't easy to walk away from $300,000 a year. It wasn't easy to walk away from a career that I have grinded my entire life to get to. And it wasn't easy <laughs> jumping into the unknown without any idea what was coming next. But the thing that got me through that moment and has continued to push me since is always remembering that we are in charge of the path that we take in life. Nobody else is going to make that change for us. And at a certain point, we need to be honest with ourselves with how we're feeling and whether or not the path that we're on right now and how we are spending our time is really going to make us happy in the long run. There are always paths that you can choose you always have a choice. Even if budget can be a concern, even if you feel all of this pressure from your family, from your friends, from your peers to stay where you are, remember, you have to answer to one person in this life and that's yourself. If you asked me when I was 18, if I thought that I would get everything I ever dreamed of and then end up severely anxious with mild depression and having suicidal ideation when I was 26 years old, I would have laughed in your face, but I would have also probably cried because that is the exact opposite thing that I should have been chasing this whole time. It took me time to accept that mental health takes a lot of resources. It takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of time. And at my old job, I went part-time first to really see if I could open up a little bit of breathing room to give myself more energy and space for mental health. But I ultimately realized it wasn't enough and I needed more space for myself to heal, to understand myself better, and to decide what I wanted to pursue next in life outside of the law and outside of this job. I quit my job because I learned that mental health has to be prioritized and it takes work and it takes time and it takes energy. But more important than that, I quit my job because I realized mental health is everything and you are nothing 
Your success, your achievements, your goals, your dreams, they mean nothing in the face of not managing your own mental health properly. I sometimes ask myself, Julian, do you regret quitting your job and leaving all the money on the table and the stable career, all of it to focus on mental health and to explore everything else out there? And every single time I think of the question, I just laugh because there's no amount of money that you could pay me right now to go back into that job. Because at the end of the day, there's nothing, no level of fame, money, love, compassion that will substitute for your mental health. I may not make the money anymore, but I am way happier than I've ever been before. Please take care of yourselves out there, okay guys? Much love as always. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.